this right now, and all the wives are going to be mad for you guys that are married out there. But your wife is going to be mad with what I'm about to say. If you live on a tiny lot, and if you need a riding mower, you sure as heck go get you a little Kubota, a little Mahindra, or a little John Deere 1025R. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. John here. So today we're going out to uh, the local tractor dealership. I got to do some service on my Mahindra Max 26 XLT. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the ride today. If you would, make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and keep coming back for more. Uh, we're going to see how it goes. Take a little road trip. Talk to the uh, dealer. Apparently they've got everything in stock. Now, a lot of people give a bad rap to these power sport places. The place I'm going to just happens to be that, but they also sell Mahindra and Yanmar tractors. Not quite like Chattanooga Tractor, my normal dealership. Um, they're about six hours away from here, so we're going to go check out this local dealership. It's only one within a 50 mile radius, and we'll check it out. Uh, hopefully, the truck's not too big of a mess, and hope you guys enjoy the ride. Thanks for watching. So we're just going to back out of the driveway here. Big 37s do rub a little. So, so far I've been pretty happy with Max. You know, I've had it over, a little bit over a year. Uh, a lot of you, if you haven't seen it already, you go check out my uh, day I picked up my Mahindra Max. And so far I've been extremely happy. So I've been paying on Max a little over a year. Uh, he's due for services. Uh, the plan is, you know, after I retire from my current line of work, I've got a tractor that's paid off. So either I go hang it up, go start a farm, hobby business, construction, landscape, whatever it is I want to get into, I'll have the, uh, the tractor pretty much paid off. So that's some capital slash, you know, a little fun toy for me when I retire. So one of the main reasons we're going to do Max is I've got a big project on the horizon. I don't really want to talk about it right now. I was checking my bills this week and I had a $56 a month water payment jump up to over $500. I called the local municipality and they say, sir, you've used 54,000 gallons of water. Uh, 54,000 gallons. So that's like 1,800 gallons per day of water that I've used and so I don't know it's just that's, that boggles my mind 1800 gallons per day and the camera's shaking quite a bit once again I don't know that that mount does not like this truck and I don't have a gimbal I guess I might need a gimbal for Big Red so with that being said my main water line I have a feeling it's broken I'm gonna have to get in there and replace it um, but for right now, we're going to go to the local Mahindra dealer. Uh, it's about 50, 60 miles away. You know, I talk in my other videos about how important it is to have a good dealer. Um, so far, talking to these guys on the phone, um, I'd say they're good. Uh, they do deal with power sports. They have all the filters I need on the shelf. So uh, it should be a good trip. Hopefully, it's not too, uh, not too crazy. Always clear your blind spot in your truck because uh, little cars like to be over there. So the rule of 37 does not apply and that's the 37 inch tires versus little car rule. Uh, it doesn't always apply. So there is some wind noise today. Hopefully the microphone's helping uh, cut some of that out. But we've got a little bit of a road trip. We're not gonna go speed or anything like that. We're just gonna cruise with traffic. I do have to be there in the, uh, the next hour and a half before they close so hopefully they've got my parts in stock so basically all i'm doing is a uh, 50 hour service i asked them straight up because i'm sure a lot of you guys have the same questions do i need to change all the fluids um i'm going to take a chance and say no i don't uh, talking with the dealer here they said even when they do a 50 hour service they don't always change the front axle so i'll check it out he said if it looks milky if it's not you know that clear brownish color of new oil because i mean we 49 hours on the tractor it's hardly been used it hasn't been abused it's not extreme heat or extreme cold so the fluid should look fine i'm probably going to pick up a five gallon of whatever the mahindra brand uh 
hydrostatic transmission fluid is. I've been using a, uh, I usually, usually use like Shell Rotella T and everything. I, I think it may be too thick. I think the Mahindra fluid is a lot thinner. That's more of a heavy duty like industrial equipment uh, fluid. It's pretty much universal. It has the same specs and everything as other fluids and I've used Shell Rotella in everything. Um, as far as engine oil goes for years, I'm just, I'm not so sure about their their gear oil or tra their hydraulic fluid. It, it seems a bit too thick for, uh, for the little tractor. So we're taking a nice little road trip. I know there's a lot of snow up north and uh, everything else. But down here in the south, it is uh, nice and clear and toasty. Uh, my my temperature is saying it's a nice uh, warm 53 degrees. That's actually kind of brisk and cool. That's why I got a hoodie on. <laughs> I like my uh, 70 degrees and flip-flop weather. So hopefully the uh, road noise isn't too bad. You can hear the whistle of the turbo in the background. Uh, I'm cruising down the interstate, headed to the local tractor dealer. It's about 50 miles away. Uh, as you can see, it's bright and sunny on a nice uh, February day. And there's not six feet of snow like my buddies up north. Uh, so with that being said, we're headed down the road today. Got to pick up some filters for uh, Mad Max. I just uh, brought the manual with me just in case. That way we can cross-reference part numbers, make sure I get all the parts. Uh, so uh, talking with the dealer, um, the fluid in the tractor should be good. So I know the manual says every year that you should change your fluid. and. On an engine oil, a car driven every day, a piece of equipment operate every day, I would agree. Uh, you definitely need to change your fluid every year. Uh, my tractor's got 49 hours on it. It's about to roll over 50. I've had it just over a year. And what they're telling me is even during their first 50 hour service, they don't change the front axle fluid or the transmission fluid or the hydrostat fluid in the tractor every at 50 hours because that's still really really premature uh, it, the fluids extremely expensive uh, gas and oil prices are going to continue to climb throughout mine in your lifetime so with that being said you know it's kind of like the old school method so back in the day probably 1950s or 60s and some of you older subscribers out there can uh, leave a comment below let me know you know how because the way i heard it was you would change your filter every three thousand miles and you would change your oil every six and then they started doing every three thousand miles you would change your oil and your filter so it used to be that you didn't have to do both at the same time gotta love some construction And I'm glad I'm not towing a trailer today. It's a, it's a bit wonky out here. I love seeing a generator hung from the sky. It's bad that uh, these will steal stuff. So if you look back behind me, I don't know if you guys will see it or not. There is a generator, probably 50, 60 feet in the air so that nobody will come steal that. Um, that's sad. It's like now I go into Home Depot to buy a tool. I gotta find the guy to unlock the tool because they're all connected with wires, even in the gardening department. So, and now I walk down, these flex hole batteries are so expensive, people are stealing those out of the box. Because you can get, I mean, a nine amp hour battery, that's a $200 battery. Um, so I, I was told, you know, I, I was raised that way where I'll eat ramen noodles and starve before I ask for a handout unless I really, really need something. I, uh, I'm going to miss a mortgage payment or get foreclosed upon, you know, lose my entire house. Um, other than that, I don't like asking for handouts. It's just how I've always been. Um, I think my parents did a great job of raising me, so shout out to mom and dad. I think I've turned out all right. I'm almost 40. I've lived this long. So the purpose of today's trip is to go get the filters we need so we can change out uh, Mad Max's filter. So we're going to get a fuel filter, of course. You know, you got to change your fuel filter every year or every 10,000 miles on a diesel truck. And so we'll do that side-by-side -side comparison. So if you've never owned a diesel truck or you've never owned a diesel tractor, let's talk about this a little bit. So 
my diesel truck, 5,000 miles, you change the filter if you're towing, and you change your engine oil if you're towing. Every 10,000 miles under normal use, you change your oil and you change your filter. That was one of the big reasons I went from 7.3 Ford diesel I had, which uses an H-pop high pressure oil pump to drive the injectors. And it, the intervals on that was every 3,000 miles. Every 3,000 miles I was going through nearly four gallons of oil. I loved that excursion. It was it was awesome. I wish uh, I'd had a camera and all that stuff. I, I don't even have a picture of the thing. I got married. I needed a bigger vehicle. I bought. I went all out. I bought a 2000 Ford Excursion with 7.3 liter diesel. Um, by the time I got rid of it, it had three inch lift, 35s, a tuner from Bully Dog, and it would do every bit to keep up with a five liter Mustang. And it would haul some butt. And my other buddy, he's got his old 7.3. He's got a 2001 F250. Still not an excursion, but, you know, if Bill ever watches this, I'd be surprised if he ever finds this video. Uh, switch that over. I went to, you heard nothing. So in 2006, Kent Croker ran the Baja in a 5.9 liter Cummins. So... That was an absolutely phenomenal thing to have a diesel truck complete the Baja. So what did I do? I bought my red truck. Four-wheeled magazine had a low center of gravity Mega Cab build. And I just happened to come across a red Mega, mega Cab. And she's built almost the exact same. So I've got the Kent Croker suspension system on here. I put airbags in the back for when I tow. I've got an upgraded tow hitch so I can tow every bit of the 15.7 that a uh, truck with 410s can tow. Got 37 inch tires, so with 456 gears, 37 inch tires, gives you the same RPM as a uh, 410 axle. Everybody knows you, if you ever seen uh, all these tow channels, these trucks will tow a lot more than what they say. I've never pushed the limit on it. Uh, because you also have to stop that load and this truck does not like to stop on a dime with 37 inch tires and big load uh, The most I've ever pulled is right at the 24,000 mark uh, Between the truck and the, the trailer so my trailer had every bit of 14 K on it The truck weighs about 7 K somewhere in there anyway. I just remember the the, the weight ticket was right at 24,000 pounds uh, moving cross-country and what have you so a lot of a lot of people also say this guy doesn't know anything about the north. Yeah, I got it. I've lived in Kansas, Missouri. I've lived in the Midwest where you do get some snow. You do have some cold days. And you might not have snow, but it's still minus 10 or minus 20. So it, it does drop. And that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. But I've had a diesel truck that whole time. So that being said, um, where were we? So back to the vehicle. So if I, I get to 5.9 liter Cummins. I love it. My intervals are every 5,000 miles. Uh, when I'm towing heavy, 10,000. When I'm not, I'm coming up on uh, 168,000 miles here. So I know it's time to uh, change it when the odometer rolls over to the next two. I know it's time to change again. Um, I always use conventional oil. This is a 5.9 liter. It is a holy grail of diesel engines in a Dodge truck. Uh, the transmission is garbage. It is a 48 RE. I guess some people love them. It's not the best transmission. It takes a while to get up to speed. Uh, I did have a shift kit put in it, but I had to have the transmission rebuilt at 130,000 miles. Since then, it's been great. Uh, the brakes, when I bought this thing, the brakes never really acted right. The first time I did my brake change, it made a world of difference. My brakes, the ABS, would kick in. So I don't think they had ever properly bled the system out. Um, after that, I changed out my brakes and reprimed the system the old way, starting at the, uh, the master cylinder on back, and I haven't had any more uh, ABS issues until you hit a bump, your rear end jumps, and your front is still rolling because you already went over the bump. Sometimes that'll cause a few issues with ABS. With that being said, we're going to hit the road here, pick up the filters we need. We're going to change the fuel filter, the hydrostat filter and also transmission filter. So there's three hard filters. The air cleaner, 
uh, talking with the guy, and I know this already, just blow out the filter. It's going to be good. So we'll do a quick service on Max. Uh, we will check the front diff oil. I'm going to go in and pick up a five-gallon bucket of their uh, their transit mission fluid here just so I've got it on hand, whatever the stock Mahindra fluid is. And then uh, shout out to K6 Outdoors. He recently uh, went over 100 hours on his, did a review. I don't use my tractor as much as him. I have some land out there, and he's always doing stuff on his tractor. I tell you what, if I had more land, I'd use my tractor a whole lot more too. Um, but even being on a small subdivision lot, having the pallet forks and with my woodworking hobbies and heavy tools and everything else and getting a little bit older, I'm telling you guys, the pallet forks are awesome. And even if you live in a small neighborhood, a small neighborhood on like a quarter of an acre, if you need a riding mower, I'll tell you this right now, and all the wives are going to be mad for you guys that are married out there. Your wife is going to be mad with what I'm about to say. But if you live on a tiny lot, and if you need a riding mower, you sure as heck can be like John Ritter and go get you a little Kubota, a little Mahindra, or a little John Deere 1025R. They're all great tractors. I don't talk trash. I respect the machine, kind of like Tractor Time with Tim. I just, I've owned four trucks. My first truck was a 6.5 liter GMC diesel. Uh, I had a turbo, no intercooler. That thing was a pig. I think it had all of 150 horsepower. Ooh, wee, that's pretty. There's a Massey Ferguson dealer over there. We may have to uh, check out some implements sometime. Go over there. They got some little tractors there. So Massey makes a little 1726, little bitty tractor. Or 1720, what I forget, it's a Massey Ferguson. A lot of these companies will take a, a TYM basic tractor. Um, they're 24 horsepower tractor and they'll rebadge it. Uh, it's got a, either a, a Dodong or a Yanmar engine in it. Uh, Kubota is mostly South Korean or uh, Japanese tractors. TYM is definitely a South Korean company. Uh, Mahindra is owned in India. But you know what? I've been to some more rough places in the world and those tractors even over there get beaten, used, and abused. And they're still driving around tractors from the, the 50s and 40s and 60s and 70s or whatever tractor they can have in order to plow their land, tend their gardens, and provide for their family. And a lot of them, they use it like a car. Uh, I've been to some countries with some dirt roads, and trust me, they, they use it like a car. So with that being said, tractors will last you as long as you take care of them. Change your fluids and maintain them. When something starts to go wrong, before something goes wrong, that daily uh, check of your tractor, the pre-maintenance checks and services, you know, checking your oil, checking your engine and your transmission fluid, uh, banging out your air filter, that'll go a long way. If you just go and you ride a piece of equipment hard, um, every eight hours you should be taking a break from pushing that equipment to, you know, let it cool off and do your service. You know, every 10 hours you're supposed to grease your loader. Every 10 hours you're supposed to hit all your grease points. That's why I've got my DeWalt grease gun. And I'm, I'm kind of rambling a bit, but a lot of good info in here. I mean, it's an hour long drive, so this is a, uh, this is probably gonna be a little bit long of a video. It's beautiful today. All right guys, so we only got about 13 miles to go, and then we're gonna get off the interstate, and we'll head up to the tractor dealer and check it out so I, I may uh, wander around some I'm probably won't pull out the camera I don't like ambushing people folks out there they have have no problem grabbing their camera going into a place I don't want to inconvenience somebody I'm not looking to make a living off of YouTube it's just something I want to share with you guys you know my experience and then hopefully you know help motivate you guys out there help you where if you're trying to make a decision on a piece of equipment or a tool or something for your tractor, you know. Tractors are expensive. Tractors can be really expensive. Skid steer loaders, even more expensive. Um, what I would like to have is, you know, part of me wants to start my own business when I retire from my current job, uh, go into the entrepreneurial business. I already got a dump trailer, I already got a tractor. Uh, landscaping is one of them. Um, even just doing tractor work, you know. So the main reason I'm changing all these fluids is 
I've got a long project and it's probably gonna take me you know five to ten hours of digging hopefully not uh, with the tractor but I wanted to make sure that I was good give me peace of mind and then I shouldn't have another service until you know 100 200 300 hours for my Mahindra Max has been absolutely phenomenal would I buy it again absolutely would I consider a 1025 R yes would I consider owning a BX Yes. Would I consider owning an LX, just like Tim bought? Yes. I think 38 horsepower is absolutely awesome. Um, the one thing about Max is having a 26 horsepower with 21 at the PTO. Uh, unless you're dragging an implement, you're really limited by your PTO horsepower output. And I wish if there's a way out there, and there, I'm sure there's some for them, but if I could add a little bit more fuel, add a little bit more power, you know, if it was turbocharged, um, I would love to be able to, you know, add a little bit more power to. Sorry, I was playing with my bully dog. Uh, it's getting old. So my bully dog GT, I've had that thing, I told you guys, well over 10 years now. Uh, HDMI cable doesn't necessarily like uh, making perfect contact, but my tuner's been great. So when I buy stuff, I buy stuff to last. Uh, that's why I buy DeWalt tools. You know, you can buy Black & Decker, and you can buy Hart. You can buy other brands of tools, Craftsman, and what have you. But really, um, I've had great luck with DeWalt tools, and I love them. My Dodge truck is a 2006. Some people will make fun of me because I'm not driving the nicest, newest, flashiest truck, but it's been paid off since 2014. So I've not had a truck payment in forever. Uh, new trucks are well over 60k. Uh, if I got a choice between buying a new truck and a house, it's probably going to be a house. Just to be frank with you, that's how uh, ridiculous labor and material costs have got. That in with the uh, regulations and everything on emissions. I, my truck, I, I don't know. So in 2026, 20, my truck will officially be an antique. It'll hit the 20-year mark. I'm not going to go out and get 20 uh, antique plates for it, but I will tell you that, you know, this truck is phenomenal. It still runs great. It's low mileage. Um, I've got 168,000 miles on it. That That's like, that's maybe half the lifespan of what the engine's made for. I see these trucks all the time with 200, 300,000 plus miles, and they're made to run and pull and work and so this is my daily i've got about a 30 to 45 minute commute a day i don't get rid of a vehicle if it gets me from point a to point b the day it gets more expensive for me to keep it on the road or than it would be for me to have a car payment is the day i'll consider getting rid of a car if you take care of a vehicle you change the oil you change your plugs you change your timing belt if you got a timing belt um, the vehicles will last for the most part. Um, if you if you can read a book and you can build Legos, you can work on a car. And if you don't know, uh, hit me up in the comments below if you got a question and I'll try to help you guys out with the video. Uh, once again, it's all about my subscribers. I wanna help you guys out. I've got a lot of people that just come by the channel and check it out and they view it and they don't subscribe. Uh, what subscribing does for me is, you know, I've got 212 people out there that appreciate what I'm putting out for content. I also have received comments of, hey, your audio sucks. So on some of my older videos, yes, my audio sucks. I try to try really hard to make sure I've got good quality audio. Uh, right now you're still on a Hero 5 GoPro. It is shot in 4K. It is 30 frames per second. But I'm looking at upgrading a camera. Uh, my goal is to find a camera that is 4K, 60 frames per second, that's hyper smooth. Uh, DJI makes some drones with video quality that good. GoPro makes some quality uh, cameras like the Hero 9 and Hero 8s with that quality. But what, for me, I'm looking at getting something a little bit more robust like a, uh, a Canon, a Sony, or a uh, Panasonic 
or something that you know is more of a dedicated camera for filming the action cameras are cool um, auto stabilization also is important to me everybody wants stable uh, films right now for example you are bouncing all over on my windowsill all my videos for the most part I film in 4k because I think I like to watch video on 4K. For me, I think uh, streaming, media, streaming media is definitely the future. Uh, even the cable companies like where my parents live, the cable company has gone to where it's streaming and they issue a uh, the electric power board, runs the uh, cable. They made some research and development and, and early investment into fiber optic. They're like on 3G uh, fiber that just is moving hyper fast. I've got maybe 10 megabytes per second here. They've got 350 plus megabytes per second. Uh, so technology is going to continue to get faster and faster. People want instant gratification. So pretty soon it's going to get to the point where even your phone is going to be 4K, if not, you know, 3D quality. But I am kind of excited to go check out the dealership here. I'm, like I said, I'm probably not going to bust out the camera, rush right in and start throwing a camera in people's face. I don't roll like that, but we're going to go check out the, um, the dealership up here. Uh, I looked online, they don't have any small tractors. So if you're thinking about a tractor, so right now Mahindra's got the red tag sales event going on. Uh, the MSRP on a 2020 Max XLT with a tractor, loader, backhoe, and mower is right about 34 k right now. Uh, you can finance that 0% um, if you qualify with the proper credit. And what a lot of these places will do with that, they usually want you know a down payment of at least 10 to 20% in order to get the 0% financing. Um, they don't they don't advertise that a whole lot, or that's in the fine print. Uh, another option is it kind of balances out. You can get loans with no down payment, and they usually have a um, a dealership or a bank that they work with. That'll get you a, uh, a low rate equipment loan. So I bought my tractor for personal use, unlike some other folks. So uh, if you were using this for business, if you, you were using it for farming, uh, there's some good tax incentives out there where you don't have to pay taxes if you're using it for, uh, for actual farm or you own X number of acres or you're registered with your local state as a, a farmer. Um, I don't have that much land to qualify for that, so yeah, I did have to pay taxes. That did have to get rolled into my overall purchase price out the door. Um, Chattanooga Tractor and the other Mahindra dealers are going to hate me for saying this, but I came in right time, right place, right discounts. I walked out the door for just over 28 for uh, Mad Max, and that was uh, a little over a year ago. Um, import tariffs prices on labor, prices on material, prices on steel have all gone up. For example, I think I paid about 5500 or 6000 for my backhoe option. Now it's a $7,500 option. Um, my backhoe is made in the USA. I think the current ones are too, along with the mowers and what have you. But for the most part, you know, I really enjoy my tractor. I think it's absolutely a fabulous piece of equipment. It'll last me many, many years to come. Uh, will I stay with Mahindra? I don't know. Uh, if I ever get an offer for a Kubota or John Deere, do you think I'll seriously consider it? Absolutely. Um, but right now, my tractor is meeting all of my needs. Uh, as my needs grow over time, uh, there is a possibility that I might look at getting a, uh, a different color tractor. John Deere's are nice, but John Deere's come with a premium. Kubota's are nice, but Kubota's come with a premium. Uh, up here on the left, looks like we got another dealership. What is this place? This is a case tractor dealership over here. So we've driven past a Massey dealer. Uh, definitely, definitely some big tractors over here. So I'll let you guys see some serious agricultural equipment there so when you go look for a little max 26 uh, you tend to get some looks but I may have said it earlier and in case I didn't a lot of the wives are going to hate me for this but if you have enough land to where you have a 
lawnmower. You could easily step into an entry level Max 20. You could easily step into an Emax. You could easily step into an RK24. You could easily step into a Kubota, a 23BX. You could easily step into a John Deere 1025R. So it's just no, it's going to be ridiculously expensive. So I think I priced out a John Deere 2025 and it was comparable to the Mahindra Max a little bit more. The 1025, same thing, it's about comparable to the Max 24. The BX 23S, uh, you're looking probably between 20 and 23 for a tractor lower backhoe and mower combination, a TLBM tractor loader backhoe mower combination, which I think is the best all around uh, tractor you can use. A zero turn will cut better than a tractor, um, but it all depends. You know, if you're cutting a field, that's great. But say you want to till a garden, you want to help out your neighbors. So really, if you look at Tractor Time with Tim, John Ritter, and a lot of these guys, they bought a machine and it was a toy to them, but most of what they did was actually to help out their neighbors. You know, Tractor Time with Tim got his start. He was still working uh, before he went YouTube full time. And he was helping out neighbors, doing odd jobs. You know, his advice is own your tractor for a year, get used to it before you start helping out other people or start trying to make a profit off of it. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm still not proficient enough with my backhoe that I would want to go dig out on somebody's foundation. Um, if I used it every day for, you know, six months to a year, absolutely. I, I would feel much more confident. Uh, with my own stuff, I'm a little bit more forgiving. If I tear it up, I know I got to fix it. Uh, when you're dealing with somebody else's property, the liability of getting sued uh, is always there. So I don't want to get sued anytime soon for uh, tearing up somebody's property. Also, uh, a lot of places you got to call 811. You got to, if you're actually trenching, you got to have dig permits. And there's a lot of red tape in that. So, and with insurance, you have to have carry business insurance when you uh, move into doing work for other people. As long as I'm using it for myself and my friends, um, my neighbors, as long as they're my friends, I'm covered under my insurance and I don't need business insurance. So with that being said, make sure you guys smash that like button, smash that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. So the place we're going to today, it's called Adams Power Sport in Statesboro, Georgia. It's about it's only dealer within 50 miles of where I live. And so it should be coming up here in the next four miles. I don't know if it's on the left or on the right, uh, but we'll check it out. So he's got a lot of uh, cool ATVs, Honda. It's mostly a Honda dealership. Uh, Honda makes good equipment. He also sells Yanmar and Mahindra tractors. Uh, if I drive up and it's all ATVs, you know, uh, I got it. But it, there's enough farmland in the background here that, you know, I'd say he's a legit tractor uh, dealer. Talking with their their parts guy on the phone, you know, he seems knowledgeable. He went back, he referenced everything, and within five minutes he was able to tell me, yeah, I've got all the, the filters and stuff you need here on the shelf. Uh, we should be able to pick up our filters today and uh, get Max freshened up for our big project we're getting ready to undertake. Uh, the backyard's been flooded. Uh, I have a feeling I know why it's not been draining here lately. Uh, my water line actually runs through my front yard. So we're gonna go dig, my water line's probably uh, about a foot deep. So we'll take off the initial five to six inches and we'll have to trace the line. Now, I didn't have like a catastrophic break. It didn't take and explode. There's not water gushing into the yard or anything. It's a foot deep, so it's leaching up to the, the surface. And, you know, I don't have a clue where the leak is. Now, it could be horrible. It could be all the way under my foundation. Uh, if that's the case, tell you what, we'll start busting up some foundation. Is it worth claiming on the insurance? I don't think it is. If I can get it done for less than four grand, then I save money on this by doing it myself. And so that's part of my channel. A lot of people will just pay a plumber, pay an excavation company, 
go in a whole bunch of debt in order to, I mean, you've got to have water, especially if you got a wife and kids. You can only go so many days without, you know, showering, shaving, washing. Your kids got to be clean. So I know how to rough it. But anyway, we want to get Mad Max in tip-top shape so we can go in there. We're going to probably take the first five or six inches off the top, finish it up by hand with a shovel, and then we'll probably roll out some PEX tubing and uh, replace the water main with PEX. Uh, it'll be a fraction of the cost. Most of it would be equipment riddle, fuel costs, labor costs, and their time to go through and excavate my front yard all of 25 or 30 feet to find out wherever this leak is. If I gotta bust through concrete or rebuild walls, just makes for more content, guys. So hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, stay tuned and we're... Your destination will be on the left. All right, so our destination is gonna be up here on the left. Oh, he sells Kubotas too. Hmm, he's got a Kubota dealer right next door. Well, we're not trading him Max anytime soon, but I see why he doesn't have any Max 26s on the lot. If you can buy a little Kubota, a lot cheaper. But the funny thing is you can pick up a Kubota with the front forks and you could lift a, a 1025R with the rear. And they have 1,402 pound lift capacity at the pivot pins, simply phenomenal. So anyway, we're gonna get off here and uh, I've been talking now for 40 minutes straight. I don't know how much uh, battery I've got left, uh, but we're going to check out Adams Power Sport here in uh, Statesboro, Georgia. It's the closest dealer. And, uh, oh, look at that. He's got a couple little bitty tractors. So this is just a small dealership. He's got a few toys. All right, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. All right, so we just wrapped up Adam's Power Sport. We picked up a fuel filter, a hydrostat filter, a transmission filter, and an engine oil filter. So we'll get those now for the Mahindra. I went, and got, went ahead and got some of their um, hydraulic fluid. It's a little bit more pricey, but you know, to me, it's what the machine comes with, and I might as well run that through there. I know that you can save some money going somewhere else. Um, gave them my business. I'll probably be back for more parts in the future if I ever need anything. For the engine oil, that's too easy. I'll go get, we'll get some Rotella T4 for the engine, and we will, uh, it should be right about a gallon. It, it's a small tractor, small three cylinder. So it's not quite like my big five nine Cummins here that uses three gallons of oil. It's more like, uh, just shy of the whole gallon. The way Mahindra does their parts numbers, it was a little bit confusing even with the manual for the dealer to locate the parts and cross-reference everything. And I've heard that is kind of like, I've heard things from, uh, you know, Tractor Mike out there. He does a whole bunch of uh, tractor videos too. The part of the reason I went with Mahindra is even when I bought mine at Chattanooga Tractor, I asked them, I was like, how many of these tractors y'all work on? And they really don't. Unless, you know, a customer has some type of catastrophic thing or a leak. I mean, you could go check out uh, my buddy over at K6 Outdoors. He did his 100 hour review. He's had a few minor leaks. Uh, I won't say my tractor's perfect. I had the similar leak on the loader. Had to uh, tie it up with a banjo bolts on the uh, hydraulic coupling. But other than that, she's been a great little tractor. Uh, had her a little bit over a year. We're gonna go swap out our filters and uh, we'll go from there. So unless it throws a rod through a cylinder block or we have some type of catastrophic failure, I, I'm completely happy with my purchase. You know, to me, I, like I was telling the guys there at uh, Adams Power Sport, Max is kind of my little retirement plan. You know, the idea is have him paid off so I can enjoy him once I, uh, once I finally retire, start my second career. So we'll stop and we'll get some uh, Rotella at the auto parts store right next to the house and we'll go from there. But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the uh, drive out here through the country. And uh, again, big shout out to Adams Power Sport. No, I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, but once again, I, I think they're a dealer that I'll probably do business with in the future. 
uh, just like Chattanooga Tractor. He did, I did ask him if he was having any sales on implements, and he said, hey, we'll, we'll be happy to make you a deal on anything you want with a big smile. So once again, they're in the sales business. Repeat customer is what they're really working for. They want to make you feel taken care of. They want to know that uh, if something breaks, you're going to come back to them. And I tell you what, they are a Kubota dealer too. But one thing is, I didn't see one orange little tractor on their lot. So I think they're new to Mahindra. Um, they've probably been with Mahindra for a year or two. They also or Yanmar tractors. Yanmar, as you know, makes the engine that you find in a lot of other equipment. Yanmar makes excavators and tractors. Uh, they're more of a uh, hobby tractor, outdoor power sport type of uh, place. They do have some two series Mahindras out there and some three series. But they're not, they're not selling the big ag equipment at that, uh, that Mahindra dealer. Uh, for the most part, I'd say John Deere, Macy, Massey Ferguson, and some of these others uh, have a, a pretty good strength of hold on the uh, market around here. John Deere and Kubota is still top two brands in America, but number one worldwide, is, of course, is Mahindra. So I have no problems with Mahindra tractors I, I think it's a great little tractor even the when Cabela's was selling tractors they were selling rebadged tractors um, they were actually TYM tractors some of the Mahindra tractors are you know made by other companies this one happens to be made by Mitsubishi and I think it's a good tractor and uh, yeah with that being said uh, once again post World War II they were building Jeeps and so Mahindra has the rocks are out there and the Jeep and the Rocks are, are totally different vehicles, very similar in their grassroots. I'm enjoying my Mahindra. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. If you would, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and keep coming back for more. Hopefully, the uh, camera wasn't too bouncy and big red, but uh, we're just going to head to the house and go from there. Oh, my God.